Okay, today we're going to be seeing what happens to a humidifier in a vacuum chamber. So I've had a lot of requests to do this one, but it took me a while to find a humidifier that would actually work in the vacuum chamber. So this one is kind of cool. It just runs by a USB plug-in. In the center, it has a small ultrasonic disc. So we all know what a humidifier looks like in normal atmosphere. You can see how it kind of mists up here and floats around, kind of like a cloud. But what would it look like if we just removed all of the air around it? Will the water droplets just fall straight to the ground or what's gonna happen here? So the humidifier works by atomizing the water. And that doesn't mean that it's actually making it into individual atoms. But what it is is in the center, there's an ultrasonic disc that vibrates rapidly and it moves so fast that the water doesn't have enough time to go up and down with the disc and so when it moves down it creates a tiny little vacuum within the water and so it essentially cavitates the water and cavitation just means it boils the water and it boils the water due to a pressure decrease and then it snaps back shut once the pressure goes back up and that quick decrease and then increase in pressure slams the water together and makes tiny little droplets on the order of microns and it eventually disappears because it just evaporates into the air around me. So let's check out what happens in the vacuum chamber. Okay, humidifier in a vacuum. Three, two, one. Okay, it's starting to fill up with the mist already. Getting cloudy in there, we're at half an atmosphere. Looks like the mist is still flowing around in there just fine. We're at 0.4 atmospheres. Zero point three atmospheres. starting to look a little different. If you notice, look at that stream of mist coming right out of the center. We're at 0 0.2 atmospheres. It's not looking as cloudy in there. Whoa, it's becoming like this gun of mist. This like ray of mist coming straight out of the center. Look, it's just shooting it straight out of the center and the mist hits the top here and then just falls down. We're at 0 0.1 atmospheres. That's amazing, look at that. So what's happening here is we've lost the air resistance now, and so that ultrasonic disc is just shooting water droplets off of there, but there's no air to slow it down, so it just shoots off there at high speeds. And then it hits the top of the chamber up here. Look how that just shoots out of the center up to the top. Okay, we're almost at full vacuum. Look how cool that is. It creates like this mushroom cloud. So the water in the cup's actually boiling. So you can see now it's not really clouding up the chamber where it just spreads out and diffuses evenly, but it's just shooting up like a jet, hitting the top and then falling down. That's actually really cool looking. <laughs> That's so cool. So it's having trouble getting to a full vacuum. That's because the water is actually evaporating very quickly because it has a ton of surface area in here. So now you can see it really good. Look at that jet of water just coming off the atomizer. So it has no air resistance, so that just shoots off there at very high speeds. It's really cool. And then the water just falls down because that ultrasonic transducer is moving very quickly, vibrating up and down, and then those bubbles collapse almost instantaneously, and that's what forces the water droplets up. I wanna feel what that actually feels like. That's so cool looking.
Another interesting note, you'll notice that there's not as much of a cloud falling off of where it's impacting up here. That's because it formed a really good water droplet there, so it's able to absorb all of those little tiny droplets hitting it. Whereas before it was just dispersing them and they were falling down around it. Okay, now let's see what happens when we let the air back in. Three, two, one. So you can see now that the air's back in, you can see all this turbulence around the center jet. But when the air was removed, that turbulence wasn't there because it was just the pure water droplets shooting out of there. And they weren't getting impacted by the air and deflecting off. So I'm really curious how strong that jet of propelled water is. Because I assume it's traveling pretty fast. Even though the water droplets are pretty small, I want to see if they could actually move this aluminum foil on this stick here. So I'll get it under vacuum and then I'll move my magnet with the aluminum foil in front of the jet. And I just want to see if it's able to move it at all. So I just noticed it looks like that this is in the stream, but it's actually behind it. So I haven't moved it in front of the stream yet. Okay, let's move it in front of the stream and see what happens now. Okay, so now, now I've kind of created a little pendulum and you can see that it does move it up and down a little bit. So the water droplets on the end of there, so it's pulling it down a little bit, so it doesn't need as much force to move it, but you can see that it pushes it up, up and down. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. Remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. Leave me any comments, questions, or suggestions you have in the comments section. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.